Hey, really quick before the video starts, this is VOD Watch Wednesday. It's a brand new series that I'm doing on my Twitch channel every single Wednesday. If you guys want to join my Discord server, uh, the link will be in the description. There's a hashtag VOD review channel. You can submit your VODs of your AOS games into there. Any rank, region, class you're playing, it doesn't really matter. Feel free to submit your VOD. Uh, and then I'll be going through every single Wednesday, grabbing some of the VODs, doing some reviews, giving some free coaching for you guys, and then uploading them afterwards onto YouTube. This is our first episode, uh, learning the basics, and uh, this will be happening every single week. So if you are interested, go to the Discord, go to my Twitch channel if you guys want to watch it live, and uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoy the video. Um, let's skim through. What do we got? Uh, we got... DK Sork Wizard versus okay, this is a good one actually. This is a triple SA, so you're gonna have triple high SA comps here. Uh, all these classes are gonna be pretty hard to grab, and you're gonna be have to be pretty smart about them. Ninja nowadays is like, if you can't hit your grabs well, you're gonna pretty much just fucking lose. I will be straight up honest, you will just get hard dumpstered. So, um, he's gonna be a pretty important factor here. He is the only grab in this comp, so. He's gonna have to play it pretty safe as well. Sork is also good into ninja. DK is pretty good into ninja. And Wizard is also pretty good into ninja. Just because they have long range SACC spam or full in your face SACC spam. You can't really catch them normally. Uh, we are on Mansion, so buffs and stuff are not gonna be too important on this map, like at all. So we're just not gonna mention it. And let's get it going. Uh, starting off, UI is gonna be the most important thing. Um, UI is pretty important when it comes to classes like Ninja because CDs are, you have to constantly track them. You're gonna have to track through literally like 25, 26 cooldowns on Suck Ninja. Realistically, you only have to track maybe 19 of them, but 19 is still a pretty big number you have to track. So keeping your eye on your cooldown bar is really important. I think you have a pretty similar one to mine, it looks like, and then you kind of expanded it. So not too bad uh but it is important to have them set up in a way that's easy for you to read uh keeping ankle and crescent is pretty close together actually we'll, we'll change this up we'll focus on like how you should organize it in general generally you want your iframes so you want your iframes to be close together and then you want your essays to be close together uh specifically your essays that you're going to use in neutral a lot or if you have to link or like lingering super armors those are good and then i would d linger or group up your damage skills whether it's unprotected uh, or protected, usually you want to protect your dam or couple your damage ones together that are SA based, and then you also want to couple ones that are unprotected. But you don't want to couple them together necessarily because then you might run into the problem of wanting to use a protected damage skill and then seeing an unprotected damage skill and assuming they're equal. So you don't want to do that. So iframe SA damage and then like movement skills are the next one that you want to protect or couple together. Uh, those are the four that I would, how I would uh, do it personally. That's how I have mine. Uh, for you here, I noticed that you have your block jump front and center. This is fine because you want to keep it like nearby. But personally, I would move your ninja step to be right here. So they're close to each other. And then probably your uh, Oni shadow as well. I would also move it up and then maybe your concealment. That'll be good. Uh, I would also move your Moonlight and your Beheading. These are unprotected CC skills to be close together. And then that way you can move your uh, Evasive Malice, a movement skill, to be close to your Shadow Stomp, your Fatal Blow. You also don't need to track this skill. This is specifically for Ninja. You don't need to track this because when you use Shadow Stomp is when you're going to use Fatal Blow. You're not going to use these skills separately, really. So just keeping them, you don't need this. You can just get rid of this and then you save a slot and then you can move your Evasive Malice to be next to Stomp. That'll work better for you. Um, grab, this is fine. Cutthroat, this is fine being soft to the side. And then Ghost Slash, you can put it like near Ghost Greeting or your Stomp and stuff so you know as well. Um, and then outside of that, you should be good. I, th you have the same hotbar as me, I, it looks like. So that's good. Um, and then I see you have these here just like I do. You can also look here for Ghost Slash. This is what I normally do personally. So yeah, that's uh, cooldowns and UI, how I recommend you change it up. Um, we are in yellow. I think this is like 1200-ish, 12, 1300-ish. So realistically, if you play this smart, these games shouldn't be too difficult. You just gotta be, gotta be slow and smart. So you're playing stealth early. My recommendation is don't stealth out of spawn, but get a little bit of movement to some direction and then pop your stealth without them seeing that you're stealthing. So you can go down here and then pop stealth here. That's what I normally like to do on this map because I don't like stealthing here because they can usually see me. Uh, but you, that's fine even if you want to. But you can get to like the far left side here and then pop it. Um, that way you're not in the middle of the fight. So if this wizard tosses a bow light, it doesn't hit you. 
Um, so we're playing stealth here. Grab. Oh, fuck, you try to go for the grab. If you're going for a burst grab out of stealth, there's two ways you want to do it. Uh, if you pop ninja step, you're going to reveal yourself and then you're going to grab. So you're assuming they're locked in a skill that means they can't react to your movement before you grab. So that's a little bit risky. The best option usually is doing boss slaughter into grab. Also, when you did ninja step here, if you wanted to do ninja step, you don't want to shadow slash it. I know you were too far, so you were scared you wouldn't hit it. Uh, but this will delay your grab too much, so you don't want to do that. Focus on using boss slaughter grab out of stealth. It's usually your best option. You're probably going to get punished here. Yeah, you get punished. Um, it's a bit unfortunate, is what it is. You're going to stand up, though, so not too big of a deal. He fucked up his combo. I think you would have been fine there, but if you don't want to greet it, all good. Uh, bad V. Try not to V so close. Go farther away before you V. After you V here, this is a big tip, right? When you have no V, this applies to any class pretty much, right? If you have no V and you're coming back into the fight, you do not just want to fucking dogpile in. Because literally, you going in here is certain death if you get caught. And especially on a class like Sect Ninja where you're so unprotected, it's a bad idea. Your best goal, uh, your biggest goal is that if you are a mobile class like Sect Ninja, uh, meaning you can kite away if they pressure you. You want to get optimal spacing. This is fine. And you want to hold this and you want like frontal guard. They have nothing to really get behind you insanely fast. So you can like frontal here and hold off. And you just want to wait. Maybe toss like a malice if you want to be a little greedy with it. But otherwise, you're not going in. You're just going to hold. If you're a more uh, lower mobility class and they have classes that are going to run you down. Like let's say you're a wizard and they have striker warrior or whatever. You're just going to stay out of vision. You're going to ping your teammates. Hey, I'm over here. Uh, come to me, and then you're going to wait for your teammates to come. If they don't come, they're trolling. Um, and then the biggest thing is that you're also low HP here. So you don't want to get damage chipped out from range by them running you down. That's like your biggest fear. So you really want to be smart about your spacing and react to anyone pushing you to go like away and towards your team, ideally. So you go back in here. You don't get caught. Playing some super armor. This is a greedy shuriken flight. You don't really want to shuriken flight in close range. Try to get in the habit of not using that skill too often. Uh, you try to go for e-buff here. Big tip. Uh, some classes can do this. Others can't. Save your e-buff for after you get a CC. So if you get a CC, then pop your e-buff. Because your e-buff animation on ninja is so short in time. Like it's this long. Whereas some classes, their e-buff animation is this long. You can basically get a CC pop your e-buff, and then go for the re-CC right after, and then you'll be able to get your guaranteed damage on this skill, and then also extend it into your next few fights. Whereas popping it like this here, if you don't CC this guy, um, like you did, he might just run away from you, and then your e-buff is going to get no value. Worst case scenario, they instantly V from your e-buff. Bit of a greedy Moonlight. Once again, I'll give you a priority list right now for skills you don't want to use in close range. So you don't want to use Moonlight in close range. You just really want to avoid using this skill um, if they're looking at you like this. You don't want to use Shuriken Flight in close range. Okay, you don't want to use um, Shadow Stomp in close range. On Ninja, you don't have to. Uh, and then you want to be careful using your Crescent Slash in close range, okay? Outside of that, most of your other skills, you'll be generally okay. Beheading is a little bit risky, but because you can alert sense immediately after, you can be a little greedier with it. Um, but outside of that, you should be fine. But those are the main skills you do not want to use in close range. So, um, the way you want to generally play Suck Ninja, I'm watching this right here. Look at how you move. You're going to stand still in a stationary SA, and then you're going to go straight into another stationary SA, and then you're going to go back into him like stationary SA again. You tried to red rain here. The way you want to play Suck Ninja is that you want to do this one skill and then you want to look at your movement bar and then you're going to be like, okay, I want to space away. So you're going to get mo you're going to get distance and then you're going to hold again. Okay. And then you're going to do another stationary essay like Crescent Slash. And then you're going to wait again and then you're going to do another stationary essay or like a movement skill, get spacing and then your next stationary essay. You don't want to stand in one place for too long on a class that's squishy like this. You want to keep moving. So doing this right here into Shadow Slash, that's okay. But you don't want to be heading here because he could just CC you at the same timer. Instead, you want to just like space. I'm guessing this is going to be a reoccurring thing. Okay, we're coming. He just stood there. I thought it was a stuff. So we have no e-buff here and you're 70% BSR. Make sure you tell your team about this. I don't know if you did or not. I skipped over it. But generally, just make sure you tell your team. 
big thing, if you've already stealthed to one direction one time, try to mix it up. Don't do the same thing multiple times. As you get higher up in elo, people will expect it because you've done it once. Good red rain. This is fine. Okay, so like at this point, yep, you can go for the grab. Good frontal guard. You're going to want to... So when you ankle cutter here, you don't want to give him your back. So let's say you want to you wanna move this way with your ankle cutter while blocking this guy. Just flick your camera 180 here. Frontal guard this direction. And then flick your camera back and then ankle cutter that way. Does that make sense? So you'll get your frontal so this guy can't hit you with this. Because he could have CC'd you here if he tossed a CC. But he tossed a slow instead. So you only got hit with the slow. Does that make sense? So you want to block it and then flip over. Cutthroat movement. I like it. That's good. Shuriken flight. Bad again. You're doing it unprotected in his face. Good spacing. Moonlight's a little greedy. You're relying on Shadow Slash too much. If you don't, if you're not having to play this close range, and instead you just Shadow Stomp, Fatal Bloated, like away to here, then you could have done something like Shuriken Flight or your Crescent Slash or, or Blade Spin or Red Rain, and not worry about getting uh, like burning so much SA stamina here. You just want to get use your Stomp and Fatal Blow more for movement. I'm also not. Good grab attempt. When you're fighting Sork on any class, you want to wait until he does GRJ, his Grim Reaper, his windup. And then after he does GRJ, he has two options. He can either linger it or he can dash and then toss it out. So he has two options here. And then you basically are going to 50-50 on whether he does which one. If he sees you standing there and he's a good Sork, he'll dash it and you can expect that. So this is a mind game right here. Uh, if he's a bad Sork in this elo, usually they'll just let it rip and you can just grab it. Neutral game. Kitty. Box claw. Make sure you animation cancel it on frame one. You can use smoke screen. You can use only shadow. You can use malice and then ghost step. All right, like this is good spacing. Oh, this is fine. But because you're you're holding your stick, yeah, this is what I mean. Because you're not moving enough. Funny enough, the more you move, the less stamina you're gonna burn. Almost got stiffed. Make sure you don't use fatal blow by itself. Always do stomp fatal blow. Never use fatal blow by itself. The only time you'll do that by itself is if you're really desperate. But otherwise, you're just going to do Stomp Fatal Blow. Next round. We've covered a lot of the stuff that you're making mistakes on. So we'll just go through it now without pausing. And then kind of just go over and just repeat it. Um, if it happens again, we won't have to pause. I would not grab here. You went for it. It's fine. It worked out. You didn't get caught. I would just do Block Jump Smoke there, personally. E-buff, okay, it's not the worst. Ooh, it looks like you got a misinput. Lock your shuriken throw. You do not want to use that skill unlocked on Suck Ninja. No reason to. You're going to get sniffed here. Oh, no. Yep. He sniffed me. There is no... That's high pingy you. Speed spell from your wizard. Make sure you wait if you ever have a wizard on your team to get the speed spell before iframing. This is really risky what you're doing here. Just standing still in the middle of the fight. Play farther away if you want to play stealth. Got him, Good got him. grab. So your goal should be, I'll give you a quick combo. If you get this grab, your first skill in a group scenario like this, if they don't have grabs, pop your red rain, and then you're going to smoke screen stun him after the red rain. This is your protected combo recc. It could be blade spin first too, but I like holding blade spin for the end of my combo after I've gotten more uh, add-ons up. So you're gonna red rain, and then you're gonna smoke screen after like a quarter second of your essay linger of your red rain. This will give you a stun, and then you can pop blade spin, into um illusion into a cutthroat into like uh movements beheading and then like damage him from range you're gonna get that spacing once you start using your unprotected skills away from him stunning for recc on suck ninja is pretty good it's like your best recc it is not a float unfortunately i like it so this is where i would not have red rained so you don't want to use Red Rain as a damage skill. Your Red Rain is kind of your prepper. Right here, you're much better off doing Blade Spin. And then that'll give you your animation cancel faster. So you can start doing more damage. So you could do like Blade Spin. And then you can do Illusion. And then you might get pushed back from the Sorks damage. And then it'll do like Double, mal uh, double Malice into uh, Alert Stance and Mouse Moves your Stomp. Or you could use Cutthroat here. Uh, or you could get like Dark Frenzy or like Moonlight off from this position. Because this guy is too far to CC you. But you definitely don't want to use red right in here. Just look at how much time you're wasting. It would have already been out of your blade spin into illusion. 
And then now as a result, this guy is going to stand up. I think this is just a misplay from you in terms of misinputs. You go stepped into Malice. You probably got nervous here, is my guess. Remember, you have Illusion still. You use all of your damage skills, your protective damage skills that you can. And I believe you die here, and then that should be the round. Why? Why are you guys so far away? Don't. Okay, it's fine. All right, I think that's honestly that's mostly enough that I have to see. There's a lot left in this vod, but it's most likely going to be a lot of the same stuff. Um. So work on the things I said, keep it, uh, keep it up. I mean, you should be fine after you do those and then um, you'll be good to go, man. You have a lot of stuff to work on, but it's a lot of stuff that's very easy to solve, very easy to fix. So you don't have to work too hard to fix it. You know what I mean?